So lack of portfolio diversification makes globalization risky for Western investors who do not detain enough foreign stocks and ask for a sizable premium when investing in firms exposed to trade shocks. So American investors ask for a 7% risk premium when they invest in companies exposed to globalization instead of not exposed firms. Such a premium is of the same magnitude as the premium asked by American investors to buy stocks instead of risk-free assets. So in a paper with Jean-Noël Barrault and Eric Loalich, we define exposed to globalization firms in industries with low shipping costs and not exposed those with high shipping costs. By analyzing return data of almost 6,000 American stocks in the 75-2015 period, we find that firms in low shipping cost industries have average annual returns that are 7% higher than those in high shipping cost industries. And the premium seems to be commanded by the risk of displacement of the less productive firms in industries exposed to foreign competition. So let's consider a trade shock that makes Chinese firms more competitive in the American market. The effect for American investors is the sum of a price effect and a wealth effect. The price effect is positive because lower prices improve investors' welfare, while the wealth effect depends on the composition of their portfolios. So for a well-balanced portfolio, including both American and foreign stocks, the effect could be null or even positive. But for a portfolio in which local stocks are overrepresented, though, the effect is negative. So a positive risk premium for more exposed companies means that investors' portfolios are not diversified enough. Then we repeated the analysis in 16 European countries and the results are the same. It suggests that our analysis is robust and that the lack of diversification affects not only American investors. So in years of declining shipping costs and raising exposure to trade shocks, less diversified portfolios are vulnerable and a global diversification could be necessary.